Hi, I'm Garland. We're going to do a walkthrough on this J Flight right here. Uh, this particular model is a 34 MB DS. That's mid bunk, double slide. But almost all the features on here are going to be applicable to just about all the other J Flights. So we'll start with the door, go around the outside, then do the inside. So, the door. You got your regular door, your screen door, and then this door has the little T-bar latch. So if you are going to just be using your screen door and you don't want the wind blowing that door back and forth, you can fasten it in place like that. The other thing about this unit, it has these wonderful new steps. The thing to be about aware about them is your door needs to be all the way open in order for them to clear the door frame. So that's how that works. Your door will then close completely without any problem. So to take them out of there, you do need to have the door clear open. You've got a little release latch here. Make sure you hold on to this. It's not a spring assist do uh, set of stairs, so they are going to come out. So just be careful with that. While it's up here, we can show you, you have two little push pins here, one on each side, and you can adjust these feet individually. So when you're at your campsite, if it happens to not be sitting level, or the steps are banging every time you go in and out the door, you can adjust these so that it'll set level for you. As we go down this side, Underneath your awning area here, you've got a setup for an outdoor TV. You've got this little bracket here. Uh, the, uh, the mounting bracket that goes for it is also in on the bedroom bracket. So I'll show you how it works in there. This is where your TV signal would come out. You got a double receptacle here. As you move down a few feet, you have another double receptacle. So out here underneath your awning space, you've got four outlets for 110 power, TV signal, and a bracket for an outdoor TV. Here we have your pass-through storage. You put the bodies in this side, you take them out the other side, nobody will ever know. Inside here we have a couple cranks. This one, the longer one, does your stabilizer jack. Now, a lot of people will use this crank. Other people use a cordless drill or just a regular drill. It's a three quarter inch socket. It's much faster. Um, our, our shop techs use it all the time when they're working on these in the shop. Instead of cranking them, they use the drill to run them up and down. The second crank is for your power tongue jack. So we'll look at that here in a second. When you're finished in here, you Put your lid down. I always point out you got a little clip here that holds your compartment doors open. That's so you don't have to be holding it up with your head or your shoulder while you're trying to get things in and out. Human nature, we finish, we slam the door shut, then we've broken this clip. It happens often enough that we have a whole shelf full of replacements. Gray ones, black ones, silver ones. Anyway, be aware that that's there. Uh, I think that's everything on this side. We go around the corner. First thing you might see is this little plug. It's for solar panel. So if you decide to try solar panels on this unit, that's telling you it's set up to accommodate that. You have your power tongue jack. It has a light. It's got the up and down button. This little grommet here, you pull that off, put this crank in there, and you can run this jack manually if for some reason it would stop working. You're not gonna be stuck with it either on your vehicle or off your vehicle. You can actually do it manually by just taking that off, put the crank in, and run it. Underneath your propane tank cover, you've got propane tanks. So they're just like gas grill tanks at home. Just This is on, this is off. If you happen to have them both on at the same time, whichever way this little arm is pointing, that's the tank it's going to pull off of first. I always urge people to keep one closed and one open because 
it's set up so that if one runs empty and the other one is open, it will automatically switch over and then you run out of propane completely and you didn't even know that it was about to happen. Marine grade deep well battery, it's not sealed. So during the summer when you're camping and everything, you want to check the levels on it about once a month. It's your typical battery. It's got the cap. It's got the little ring down inside. You want to keep the liquid level with that ring down inside there. If you ever do need to add anything to it, it's just simply distilled water. Out here you've got your seven-way plug. You've got your safety chains. You have your safety brake cable. So you fasten this securely to your tow vehicle if for some reason the hitch ever came undone and this camper were to come on fastened from your tow vehicle, this would pull the brakes on your camper and set the brakes instead of it sailing down the road past you. So that's everything up here. You do have another light out here because no matter how much you plan to be done before dark, you end up doing something in the dark. So because we've got a little breeze going on here, I'm going to put this cover back on. Also notice that it has a little lid with little screw latches. You can undo those, open the lid, and get to the controls without having to put this all the way on or off every time. Here's the other side of your pass-through storage. This is the side you take the bodies out of. I'm gonna put this crank back over there. Uh, let's see, I guess you might wanna know that you can do a little thumb latch but also each compartment door has a key latch as well for security. Down this side, the first thing you might notice is this little outdoor shower. It's a six foot shower hose, hot and cold water, shower head on the end of it. It's great for kids, pets, and scaring the heck out of neighbors. Your city water connection is right here. You put the hose up there and it threads on. If you're going to use a water pressure regulator, you put that on the end of your hose first. Put the threads of your water pressure regulator on here and that'll thread on. It's typically not so much for the pressure as it is the pulsing. Because you're at a campsite, maybe 50 people are using the water, then 2, then 15, then nobody. And it's just constantly pounding your water lines in there. So that water pressure regulator just levels all of that out. Up here, you've got another water connection. It's even got a caution sign beside of it. However, us guys never read those things until we've screwed something up. So let me tell you what this is. It's a black tank flush. The black tank is everything that comes into your commode. And so it's all this stuff coming out of the commode goes into your black tank. This cleans that out really well. The caution is, once you put your hose on here, you don't ever want to turn that water source on until your black tank flush, your drain, is open because it is going to go somewhere. And if it can't get out the drain, it's probably coming right back up inside your camper. I've never talked to anybody that forgot more than once. So right underneath here, we have your hot and cold water line drains. You also can see where you're going to hook up your sewer line. It's a universal connection, so no matter what kind of hose you get or where you get it, it will fit on here. Underneath here you see your black tank and gray tank drain handles. They pull open, push closed. There, just in case you can't read black and gray, they've got them color-coded. So again, the black tank is everything from your commode. The gray tank is your sink, tub, and shower water. When you're draining your tanks, you want to do the black tank first, then the gray. That gray water kind of helps rinse out the sewer hose so it's a little nicer to handle when you're storing it, putting it on, and taking it off. Hot water tank. So it's an Atwood. It has an aluminum tank instead of a steel tank. So that means the water chemicals, like, you know, a lot of times water has chemicals in it. With a steel tank, it may interact with that steel and cause a sulfur odor. So those tanks typically require you to use an anode rod. Aluminum tanks do not have that issue. 
It's just a simple plastic plug. This is where you plug it in. Just turn the plastic plug out to drain it. This is your pressure release valve so that before you drain the water, you want to release the pressure so when you're taking that cap off, instead of it spitting and sputtering all over you, it'll just run out and go right down the side of your camper just fine. We always urge people to drain that, of course, when you're winterizing it. But in between camping trips, trips if it's going to sit for a while, you know, water in the summer gets a little slimy and yucky, so drain it each time. The first place that water goes when you hook up to a water connection or when you're pulling water out of your fresh water tank. First place it goes is to your hot water tank for two reasons. First, it reminds you you forgot to put the plug back in. And the second, you don't want to turn the heating elements on until you have water in there. So it's all about your hot water tank. Here, if you decide you're going somewhere to a camp that has no water hookup, this is where you would fill your fresh water tank. You just put a hose in here, it's going to fill up, it's going to run over when it's full. It's just like filling up a bucket or a jug or anything else. When it's full, it's going to run over. Um, let's see, to drain that fresh water tank, it's even got a couple little labels here. It's these two little white spigot drains. The reason there are two is this particular unit has a double fresh water tank, so it'll hold about 82 gallon of fresh water. You can fill them all from right here. You don't have to switch anything over. It's just because there are two tanks, they drain a lot better if you use both drains. This unit has a detachable power cord. It's 36 feet long. It's a 50 amp service. So 50 amps means it has the three blades and a prong. So you may want to make sure you're aware of that. You'll probably want to get an adapter that will take it from a 30 or from a 50 down to a 30 amp plug-in. Uh, always use the dog, dog bone style. They're more secure and they handle the voltage much better than those little flat plugs. Uh, right next to it here we have your furnace exhaust. Two things about that, it will get hot enough to leave a mark if you're running the furnace. The other thing is there are bugs and insects that are addicted to sniffing propane and they love to climb in there, sniff propane, build nests, screw up your furnace operation. They only come out when you're sitting under the awning trying to have a nice evening. So we urge people to get those screens that cover this. It just snaps on with a spring, put it on and forget it. Uh, two things that does, it keeps someone from accidentally bumping into it and getting burnt. The other thing is it keeps those insects and bugs from getting in there in the first place. We're seeing another gray water holding tank label here, and you'll see it's right underneath there. What that's telling us is that this tank has two gray water tanks. One is for your bathroom facilities, the other is for your kitchen sink. So be aware of that. It does all drain out the same connection. You don't have to hook and unhook your sewer hose to drain your second gray water tank. It'll all run out the same uh, connection. Slide rooms. This one has two. Slide room seals are rubber. So like any rubber product, if it's outside just getting beat on with the sun all the time, pretty soon it will start to get brittle. That'll affect the integrity of your seal. So we want people to use a slide room seal lubricant. Spray that on there about once a month during the summer. It's got a UV protectant, a moisturizer. It takes good care of these rubber seals and keeps your seals in great order instead of getting leaks and causing water to be able to get inside your unit. Right here you have your stove top vent. It snaps shut. When you're camping, you just snap it open, and then whenever you turn on your vent fan, it'll blow the door open, turn the vent fan off, it closes. When it's gonna sit for an extended period of time, like in between camping trips, snap it shut so that bugs and things don't try to get inside there and make it their home. Back of your freezer, back of your refrigerator. The mechanics for both of those are in there, so you probably won't ever fool with it, but if anybody needed to service it or look at it, this is their access. They would turn these two little grommet pegs, and this would come off. So that's all of that. 
Don't trip over your cord. While we're back here, you can see I only have a 30 amp service coming out of this building right here. So I used this dog boat style adapter to take it from 50 to 30 amps. Also on this corner, you've got your set cable or satellite input. So if the campground is offering that, this is where you would plug the signal in. If you take with you one of those uh, portable dishes to get satellite or TV, this is where you would also plug that in. And then wherever there's a place for a TV, there will be a place to get your signal output. Got your ladder here. It's good for 250 to 275 pounds. The ends will come off of your bumper. Most people will store their sewer line in there for travel so they don't have to store it with their nice things. Uh, it just makes it a lot handier to go down the road. But either end will pop off of here, put the sewer hose in there, put the ends back on. You've got your spare, spare tire. It's on a bracket that is adjustable. So you can re, you know, loosen it and it'll move anywhere along the bumper to get out of your way or you can remove it all together because a lot of people like to put a bike rack back here or a cargo rack. It'll accommodate around 350 pounds weight wise. So be aware that that's available. Right up here you see the blank for your backup camera. If you decide to mount one that's where it would go. As we come around this corner, you're going to see down here a remote propane connection. It's a little quick connect hose. So if you've got a bumper mounted grill, you can use that or a freestanding grill and you don't want to haul an extra tank for it. Pop it on there and it'll work off the propane tanks here on your unit. Coming around the corner, this unit also has an outdoor kitchen. So, inside here, you got another double outlet for 110. You got your little blue light for out here. You got your regular light. You got storage, more storage. You got a refrigerator that's great. It's got a can caddy. It's got a temperature control. The thing to be aware of with this refrigerator is it only works off of 110 power. So, when you're going camping, don't store meat or important things like beer and ice cream in here unless you are plugged in and have 110 power coming to this unit. Uh, the other thing here, obviously, is going to be your cooktop. So, it's got two burners. You put them on the light, so it's going to let propane get to this system. Use a stick lighter, match cigarette lighter, whatever, it'll light them and then you can adjust the flame to whatever height or low you want it to be. Coming with this is the quick connect hose that works your stove top. So people say, well, how do I hook that up? Well, underneath your cooktop, you've got this little nipple right here. That's where you put the one end of the quick connect and then right underneath there over to the left more see it clear over there on the frame that's where you would plug in for the lp connection for your stove it's an extra long hose because that does happen to be a little further away than normal we come down here we're almost back to where we started the thing to point out would be you've got self-adjusting brakes and easy lube axles they call them easy lube because on each axle you've got this little round end for the hub each one will pop off there's a grease cert inside there one to two shots of grease per year especially if you're a traveler it's gonna sit for a while then obviously you don't put that much on it maybe a shot every year or so but if you are traveling with this I would urge you that just occasionally and especially in that first six months 
either you or take it somewhere and have them pull a wheel and just check the wheel bearings to make sure they don't need to be repacked and that the grease cert and everything is working as it's intended to work. So next we're going to go on the inside. Okay, now we're inside this unit. When you first walk in, just about eye level, you have this little door here, you open it up. This has your controls and your monitoring panel. So you've got your two slide room buttons and your awning button. It's a power awning. You hit the out button, it's going to extend it out. The in button brings it back up. You have a switch here that does your awning light. It's a little LED strip. This one is going to do the ceiling lights. And like all campers, uh, you can have as many or as few on with this light switch because you can also individually turn them on or off. So if you only want a couple to come on when you come in and flip this switch, you can do that. If you want them all to come on, that also works. Up here above it, you've got your water pump button. You've got your LP gas water heater element and your electric water heater element. They do have an indicator light to come on, let you know they're on, and also to remind you that they're on. Then here is your monitor. It tells you, for example, battery. It's telling you it's full. Fresh water tank, empty. Black water tank, empty. Gray one and gray two are all empty. This will tell you empty, one third, two thirds, or full. So that's a great handy thing to have when you're camping and you want to know do you need to dump any tanks do I have any water in the fresh water tank all those sort of things you can just check there and then you'll know what's happening inside here you've got a hat rack or a coat rack you have your dinette area it does have a wall switch for the lights over top of your dinette table also you can override that switch with a master switch on the fixture itself. This particular unit is the diner table and chairs versus the dinette with the bench seats. Um, you have these kind of blinds. They'll go all the way down or all the way up out of sight or anywhere in between. So that's how all of those work with the exception. If there's any that's going to be near a cooktop, it will be the old aluminum style because state law will not let you put a fabric type window treatment near a cooktop. Next thing we have along this wall is your big TV. You have storage all the way across here. It goes clear back into the outside wall of your camper, so it's pretty deep storage. You have your sound system. And on the other side, again, more storage. So this sound system will do AM, FM, Bluetooth, uh, memory stick, HDMI, headphones, about anything you can think of, it'll do it. It also has a slot for CDs and also DVDs. So this is all connected to this bigger TV to play movies if you decide you wanna do that. You can run it all with these buttons. It also has two uh, speaker sets so inside speakers outside speakers you can have those on or off in any combination that runs off of a remote as well as the buttons on the unit itself this TV it has a little release latch and you can pop that and then your TV will come out and spin around uh, you can see that it's got connections here if you decide to put anything else on it like a game or whatever um, It's all set up to do that all the wiring and everything is coming up through that little grommet So for travel, of course, you want to make sure you've got that secured and latched You can hear it latch in so then it stays Down here underneath where all those cords are coming from you have your little hook up here for right now we've got it running off the antenna you also this is where you would hit it for cable or satellite you just change the button down here and it automatically switched over to that kind of coverage again just more storage here you have a fireplace it runs off of this little remote this thing will take the place of your chainsaw and your axe because it'll turn your fire on, it'll change the flame from height, high to low, 
You can also control the fan speed and the heat. So it, it works great off this remote. There are also little control buttons here that you can run it all with the controls if you lose this or the battery goes bad. We talked about a remote for your sound system. This is it. It'll run this remote, uh, will go through there, and it can be read through the glass. You don't have to have that door hanging open for it to work with your sound system. So as we go across here, you've got light switch here. They do, it does this little lower accent light beneath your sofa. So that's what's going on there. You've got a double outlet here on this end of this sofa, double outlet over there. You know that this will turn out to be a pretty, it's like a queen size camper queen bed. So you just take the cushions off, raise this up, and then you've got the legs under here and it just folds out all the way to a bed. The back will fold down, it's complete. And then it just obviously folds up and goes away in the opposite steps. Uh, any lights that do not have a wall switch, they're going to be like this. So you just got that little button on the middle and you just press that and it comes on and off. Here you've got recliners. They're this type that have the parachute style release. So you pull that and they'll sit back there, the wall hugger type style. So they lay down pretty nicely. You've got heated seats. you got massage seats. You got lights that'll light up your cup holder. So they're very nice, they're very comfortable. Um, you can actually sit there and fall sound asleep in front of the ball game or the movie or whatever you happen to be watching. Again, storage all the way across, little lights like that. We get here to your kitchen area. Let's see, refrigerator. It is an RV style refrigerator, which means it will run off of electric or propane. It's got a power button, so you can turn it on or off. You push it and hold it, it turns it off. You tap it, it turns it back on. You've got a mode here that will take it from electric to gas to automatic. And then you've got a temperature button. It'll take it every time you hit the button. It goes from one to five for cold to coldest. I always tell people, turn it on, put it on auto and forget it. That way, as long as you've got electric coming in here, it's going to run off of electric. If something happened, power goes out or storm comes through and it's not able to get electric, it's going to go find your propane. So if you have a propane tank in the on position, it'll find that propane and continue to run the refrigerator. When the electric comes back on, it will turn off that propane and go back to electric. So that's how this refrigerator is different than the one at your outdoor kitchen, which only works off of the 110 power. Got your little latches here. It's adjustable shelves. So if you have that really big bottle of vodka or big tub of ice cream, you can make room for it in here. Also in the refrigerator, you've got adjustable shelves, got your crisper drawer, your door compartments, everything's adjustable. And there are no controls for it inside so that food isn't gonna run around or bump around and, and change your settings when you're going down the road. Um, let's see, I guess the next thing we'll do, we'll just go down this wall. You got storage inside this particular compartment is your big envelope with all the manuals for the camper and all of the appliances. Also in here, I think there's a sink plug or a bathroom, bathtub plug, and some other little things to help finish up connections and stuff. So if you're looking for something like a sink, drain, protector, or whatever, check in there. Got a microwave that does everything a microwave does. Nothing I can probably tell you about that you don't already know. Um, here's your stove top hood. So you got a light that comes on. You got that vent that we talked about on the outside. You have a light under here to give you more light. Receptacles. This stove lights with a sparker. 
So on the front, you've got all these little icons that tell you which burner you're going to be working with. For example, this one is front center. So you put that in the flame area, turn your sparker, and it lights. Once it's lit, you can adjust the flame, higher or lower. Same with every burner. Obviously, you want to have that cover all the way back. These little grates will come off of here for cleaning or for service. You've got a button here. You turn that on, it just does these. They work as great night lights or to help you see what you're doing. You turn it to the bottom. These come on as well as your oven light. And this oven also lights on a sparker. You put your oven connection to the flame, keep it pushed in, turn your sparker, and the pilot lights and then once your pilot is lit you can release this and adjust it and the burner comes on and you can adjust your temperature it goes up to 500 degrees this little light button the top just does these the bottom does these and your oven light in the center is the off position underneath your stove great storage for larger kettles and pots and pans more storage here so in your island you've got great under the sink space you've got a light switch here that does this under light under counter accent light so it does it all the way around your island kitchen drawers nice thing about this also is on each end of this island the under counter cupboards will open for extra pantry space. I have a 9 volt battery laying here because it goes with your smoke detector right up here. I took that off just so it didn't beep or something in the middle of this filming. Okay, you got your sink. This will roll up and get out of the way. You can move it anywhere along here. This will come out. It's good for filling larger pitchers and kettles. Uh, it'll do spray or stream depending on which way you push your little button There's a little weight on the hose underneath here that obviously is sitting on something hot and cold water Catalog for accessories. This is two sets of keys You got a silver key and a black key the silver key will do all of your compartments and your door latches the black key will only do your outdoor shower. So they call this key alike. So the good news is not everybody who has a 751 key can open everybody else's camper. The bad news is if you lose these keys, you have to take the lock mechanism apart on your door, get the number off of it, call it into the factory to get replacement keys for this particular camper. So I always urge people get a couple blanks get a couple extras made and then argue who's going to remember where you put the extra keys but that's just information for you to know uh, that's the kitchen area next thing along here is your thermostat it's a digital thermostat so you touch it it lights up it's in the off position touch it again it goes to fan you can make it auto high or low air conditioning so you can adjust your temperature. Next thing is going to be furnace. Again, you can adjust your temperature once you get it to the mode you want. Wherever you leave it, that's what it's going to do. So in a few seconds, I don't know if you can hear it, but the blower just kicked on. Next thing would be the burner. And then it will do everything it can to get to that temperature that you've set it for. And then it's just going to run until you come and do something else to it. So what we're going to do is turn it back on, take it to the next thing, which is off. We'll leave it alone in a little bit. We'll hear the burner go out. Then we'll hear the blower stop, just like the furnace at home. So that's your thermostat. As we walk this way, look down, you'll see that you've got your fire extinguisher right at the door. This is your mid bunk. So you got two bunks, both bunks have a double outlet receptacle for 110 power. Uh, they've also, each bunk has its own little push button light. 
Your main ceiling lights are the push button style. Both bunks have a window. Uh, you've also got TV signal outlet and power outlet up above there. Huge closet space. More space in the bottom. Got your heating register in the floor and your air conditioning outlet in the ceiling. And then one thing, I don't really know why, but inside this bunk room is the compartment for all of your breaker switches and your fuses. So they're all labeled, which is a very nice thing. Um, they're just typical fuses. They're like auto fuses. You don't have to go buy special fuses for here. But I always urge people to get a few extra and have them on hand. It's kind of puzzling why they would put that in the bunk room. Uh, so as we go on down the hall, the next door is into a bathroom space. And it's great. It's big enough that you don't have to walk out to change your mind. You've got great linen space storage, top and bottom. The shower that's actually big enough to shower once you get inside of it. Got the skylight, got your shower head. This is a great trick to play on people when somebody's in there in the shower, you know you can put that on. Just be aware that paybacks are really rough. So be aware of that. Medicine cabinet, storage under the sink, your water pumps behind this access panel, GFI plug. So uh, remember that, like if an outlet stops working or a TV stops working, you can't figure out what's going on. Before you start worrying about a fuse or a breaker switch, check your GFI plug. You've got your two light switches. One does your main white lights and the other does the little blue night light. And again, the white ones, you can just push the button on the center and turn one or both on or off instead of having to do it right here. The other thing is you do have a vent fan. It's a manual fan and vent opening. So you turn the vent open, you hit your little power button, fan comes on. I always warn people that <laughs> I'm almost tall enough to reach that. So I'll probably have to get a little step stool to close it now. Um, so anyway, that's your fan. I uh, always tell people though, remember, no matter how fast you get the fan going, it will not pick the camper up off the ground, so you don't have to worry about that. If it did, it would really attract a lot of attention though. Hey, there's a hover camper over there. Let's go check it out. So this is your bathroom, which can be entered from the bedroom or from the hallway. So I'm going to go through this door. Sam's gonna come through the other door so we can get you more stuff on the film. So in the bedroom space, we've got TV signal output, power output. Here's that bracket that I was telling you about outside. This looks just like the one outside. It is just like the one outside. There's a little groove in the top and in the bottom. This little rail goes in the top. This goes in the bottom. It releases like this. So most people will put that on the back of a flat screen TV, use it in here. If they decide they don't want to buy a third TV for in here, they just want to use this one. You can pop it off of here, take it outside and mount it on the outside bracket. Once it is mounted, it's going to stay. It's not a willy nilly bracket that's just going to come off. So if you've got your TV up here, you're going down the road, it will be secure. Double outlet on both sides of the bed. On that side, you also can see that you've got a charging station, USB ports, and a 12 volt outlet. Individual reading lights, storage across the top, and hanging space, shelf space. Some people will take the shelves out of that side and put another little hanging rod in there. So you've got two places for hanging clothes. Um, this bed also raises up. It has struts, so you don't have to hold it up with your head to get things in and out of there. As you can see, that also connects with your pass-through storage up front. 
Some people leave it that way. Some people will take a piece of paneling or a little piece of plywood and separate those two spaces. So that wraps up the walkthrough on this unit. If you have any questions or any issues when you get out camping, give us a holler. We can usually walk you through most things out there while you're going camping, especially the first time or two. Thank you.